Module 7, Sparks on Level Parallelism. We talked about pipelining, so I just uh, go forward to the slide. Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, so, we did talk about data hazards um, and the concept of stalling, what are the challenges of installing. So, we want to find alternative ways, and that method was forwarding or bypassing, depending on what textbook you're reading. And then we had this example that was showing how forwarding can remove some of the hazards, and what in what cases forwarding cannot be useful. And one of the solutions for that could be reordering, which we reorder the instructions, and such that we had some extra you know, clock cycles between the two dependent instructions and that removed the hazards in this case, in this example, we showed, um, we talked about some of the uh, hazard detection methods. What we do with the idea is basically looking at the pipelines and each of these pipeline registers, they include the information about one instruction. So for example, if we have instruction N here, Instruction n minus one will be in the next pipeline, n minus one, minus two in the pipeline. After that, so by looking at this information specifically, by looking at the fields in the uh, instruction, so we have different fields of R, S, R, T, R, D. By looking at those fields, we could identify the data hazards, and then I think we stopped at this point, right? So we mentioned that that could be fixed. And this is the way that we could detect the hazards that happen in the execution stage. So all the hazards that we were talking about so far were about the dependencies that would happen in the execution execution stage. Okay. So now let's start from here. We talked about the detection. Now we want to start uh, how we actually do the forwarding. Okay. Because after doing the detection. We need to do the forwarding of the hardware too, and now we talk about that. We give you some hint. Your quiz is going to be about this stuff that we talk about, right? We're going to do forwarding. I, I cover some of the cases here, but there's one case that we don't talk about, and then I want you to design an architecture that supports that. Okay. Okay. So how does forwarding work? Uh, looking at this architecture, what we can see is that we do have a forwarding unit that receives inputs from different register fields in the pipeline. So we have register RD, for example, coming from the execution memory pipeline, going as an input of the forwarding unit. Then we have the memwd register RD from this pipeline going to the forwarding unit. And then we have the inputs R, S, and R, T from coming from IDEX pipeline. So by having these inputs, we can detect hazards type 1A, 1B, 2A, and 2B. Do you remember those? So we had dependencies, just because this is important. I quickly go back. We do have some examples of that, but you know what? I'm just going to explain it, the examples that we have in the slides after that. Forget about it. Um, so by having these fields in the pipeline registers, we can identify the hazards and find the dependencies, right? So what do we do after finding dependencies? Let's say I found a dependency between two consecutive instructions. The RD in the first instruction is equal to RS or RT in the second instruction. It means that there is a dependency between the instruction that is in the execution, in the, in the memory stage, and the execution stage. So now we need to do the forward. Okay. Uh, one thing that we do here is adding multiplexers to the input of the ALU. And that is because the input of the ALU now is, can come from different stages of the pipeline. So previously, at least for the first input of the ALU, we didn't have any multiplexers. First input always came from the register file, right? We knew this. This is not the case anymore because 
when we find the dependencies, there might be cases that we want to forward the first input from other stages. We might want to forward it from this part, which is the path that you see here, or in this stage, right? depending on the type of dependency. Right? So, so now what it means is that instead of waiting for the architecture to write back the result of the instruction to the register file, the moment that that result is available, we forward it. It sounds like backwarding, but it's actually forwarding. Just keep you know, that diagram of the pipelining in mind. We forward it to the next step. Okay. So now what it means here is that if there is a dependency between the, the result of the exec, uh, instruction and the execution stage and what we need in the memory, what we can do is we already have the results here and we don't have to wait for it to be stored in the memory or go back to go to the next step to be written back to the register register file. From here, we can just send it back to the ALU or we'll send it forward to the ALU, forward in time. Okay. Same story for this register here. So now, this is a multiplexer that has more than two inputs. It's a three by one, but really doesn't have any difference between a three by one or four by one. We just don't use one of the inputs. So if the four, the, if the input is if the multiplexer the forward A signal, if it's zero zero, we're gonna select the normal path. If it is zero one, we're gonna forward just follow this path. We're gonna forward what we wanna write back to the register but in the write back stage. We don't wait for it to be written back to the register file. Just right here, we forward it to the ALU. If it's equal to one zero, we get the result from the memory stage from this point before waiting for it to be written to the memory or go to the register file and send it back to send it to the first input of the ALU. We do have another multiplexer for the second input of the ALU, which pretty much does the same thing. Okay, so this supports all the 1A and 2A kind of dependencies. The second multiplexer supports 1B and 2B. And the difference is between the second the dependency between the destination in one instruction and the first source, or the destination and the second source. Okay, the first source. The second source are the inputs of the ALU. So by adding to these two multiplexers, adding a forwarding unit, that what it does, it receives the RDRS, it just receives the fields. And based on those fields, it detects the hazards. And based on the hazards that are detected, it sends forward A and forward B signals out. And that way we choose the right input for the ALU. Okay? Forwarding units, inputs or fields, outputs, output of the forwarding units, a signal that selects a multiplexer. Does that make sense? Okay, so now with these examples, we're going to understand a little more about how it works. So, this is uh, one type of hazard that we have here. We're subtracting one and three, one is three from one, put the result in two, but then we are using two in the next instruction as the first source, right? As the first source to uh, do the addition. So there is a dependency right here. Do you remember what kind of dependency this is? It's 1A. It's easy to understand if it's 1A or 1B or 2A or 2B. 1A, if there's two consecutive instruction dependencies between two consecutive instructions type 1, if we're using the first source is A, the second source is B. So it's 1A. Okay, so we have one A dependency here. I provide both here because it's just to cover all possible cases, but this example is a one A case. So what we have here is if, this is how we identify this. If the RD field in the execution memory pipeline, which is this one here, and what is happening in the execution stage is the subtraction that we see. So if the RD in the execution stage is equal to RS in this stage, which is the decoding stage, actually 
actually this is execution, this is memory, sorry. If the RD in the memory stage, which is coming from the execution memory pipeline, is equal to the RS that is happening in the execution stage, but it's coming from the IDEX pipeline, then we forward, we set this forward A signal to one zero. So what does it mean? Let's say the one zero is here, and the one zero is coming from, this is one zero. If all of this is coming from this stage, right? So you see what is happening here. If these two are equal, we already have the result of this subtraction right here. By setting forward A to one zero, we select this input, right? So the same story can happen for RT. If it's the second source, the forward B would be Z one zero, and forward B is for this moment. Right? So, this is something that I want to mention here, which I'm not really sure of. So this, this is going to go on YouTube, I might make a big mistake, I don't know. But in the book, it says, and this is just for being consistent with the book that I'm mentioning it here. It says that this policy is not accurate. And that is because not all instructions write registers, right? So if we have an instruction here that does have a dependency, but doesn't write the register, it sounds like it's a dependency, but it doesn't actually change the content of the register too, we don't want to forward it. So to fix that problem, this is something that they do, they also add and another condition here, which that condition is coming from the control signal. And it says if the control signal register right is one, and this condition is met, then forward it. So by looking at this register right here, we make sure that this register, even if it sounds like a no dependency, but it's not an actual dependency, because we're not writing anything to the register, then it doesn't forward it. So it sounds very straightforward and I think, good, sure, okay? Adding it doesn't cause any problem. But the problem I have with this statement, which I'm just putting it out there, and people can correct me, I don't know of any instructions, any R-type instructions, that actually has an RD field and doesn't write to the register. So maybe you guys know it, you can help me. I did a quick search and I couldn't find any instructions that actually involves RD, but doesn't write to it. So the first thing I thought of, for example, branch equal, right? Branch equal to one and loop, it sounds like a dependency, but branch equal doesn't have an RD field, right? Branch equal use RS and RT. So that's not even the same condition. We're not even checking the RD field. So the book says, and it doesn't provide any examples, I did some search. So last year when I taught this, I didn't have enough time to double check, so I just said this is the way you should do it. But this year, I'm telling you that I don't know if it's necessary or not, okay? Because I don't know any instruction, any R-type instructions that actually has an RD field, and we never write anything to it. We have subtractions, we have shifts, we have all type of instructions, but in all of them, we actually do write something on the register. That said, adding this you know, instruction is not going to change anything. It's not going to hurt us. It can help because we, there might be some instruction that we don't know of in the MIPS instruction set architecture, or we might want to enhance the instruction set architecture. Right? We might want to come up with some type of RT instruction that doesn't write to the register. I don't know what that is, but you, know, you might want to come up with something. Adding this here is not going to hurt. Okay, I don't think we have to do it. That's what I'm saying. I don't think it's, an, it's necessary to be there. At least with the NIST instructions to the architecture that I know. Okay. But to be consistent with the book, because when you go back and see some of the graphs, I don't want to get confused. Uh, yeah, we add this register right, and the reason is, in case we have an instruction that it has a dependency between RD and RS, but we are not really changing RD because we're not writing anything to the register, then we don't forward it. Okay? Is this clear? 
This is important for you guys to understand this because we're going to ask the question later, so make sure that you know. Okay, so now let's talk about the second type of instruction. This has a type 2 dependency. There, there's another instruction between these two dependent instructions. As you can see here, we have the subtraction. The destination in the subtraction is in the execution stage. And then we have this instruction in the right back stage. So there's a dependency here, the data is not available. So what do we do? We check the RD in the memwb register file, uh, Python register, and compare it to the RS or RT in the IDEX pipeline. And right there, we find the dependencies through this comparison. And then we set the, the forward A and forward B signals to 0, 1. Okay, so 0, 1, looking at the path, is actually coming from the right back state. Okay? So now this input is coming from the output of the multiplexer, which is supposed to be written back to the register file, but before writing it to the register file, we forward it to the execution stage. Does that make sense? Accurate policy, we have to add register right. I'm not sure, but I just put it there because this is what the book said. Okay. So now, let's talk about this. So this is a condition that we do want to do forwarding, but because there are two dependencies at the same time, we want to make sure that we don't forward it from the subtraction. So look at this case. This register 2 has a dependency to OR, and it also has a dependency to SUB. It has dependency type 1A to this one, and dependency type 2A to the instruction, the subtraction instruction. So there are two dependencies here, but what we want to do is we just want to forward from OR. We don't want to forward from subtraction, right? And it makes sense because subtraction is already changed, or is it two is already changed. So now it means that we have to add one extra condition here. And that extra condition is what we see here. So this is what it was before. This is for a dependency, the type two dependency, to A. But we add a condition here, which condition says that we only forward it if there is no dependency in the previous instruction. So this we already had before for talk to A. What it is saying here is that we also check the destination in the execution memory pipeline. And if that is equal to RS2, it is showing a type 1 dependency. Right? So it says only forward it if these guys are not equal. If it's equal, the forward A would not be 0, 1. So we're not going to forward it from here. So adding this instruction doesn't let us do forwarding from the right back stage if we also have a dependency to the instruction before that. So we only, if there's a 1A dependency, it's not going to forward. Same story for the next one. But this is just for RT. And this is a type of this should be forward B. Okay? Does that make sense? Two dependencies, you just wanna go with them. So um, it would still forward to for the second instruction for the or, it would still get forwarded from the, the subtraction? Yes, yeah, so, so forward A would be zero one, else forward A would be one zero. Uh -huh. Okay. So so that's a good question because this is just showing the forwarding for that one, but if we do have, so, so something that you should know, in the forwarding unit, all these conditions exist, right? So if we don't change this one, and we keep it as it is, and if we modify this one to this condition, it automatically gonna handle it. Because right there, you see a dependency, it put the forward A to one zero, and this is not gonna set the forward A to zero one. So, how did, if, if it was, this is something that I really love to do, and I keep saying it, but we're not doing it in the class. Uh, so 
So I would have given you a very low code of a MIPS processor, and I would ask you as a project to add the forwarding unit to it. So then you would create this if-else conditions based on this instructions that you see here, and then you, right there you had the hardware, and when you synthesize it on FPGA, you could see how it actually worked. Hopefully one day we can do it. I still need five, six, four years of teaching this course. I'm intro to make sure that everyone is having the same knowledge when we get to that point. But like you can see like these conditions when you create them, how the forwarding is handled. So these are just pseudocodes, but this can actually be a bunch of rules, like if else rules, and they can handle all of them. Okay. So it's not it was a good question to repeat it one more time is that, yeah, but we have this, but they still need to do the forwarding from this stage, and that is gonna happen because of the other condition that we have in the forwarding is. Yeah? And we don't need to modify that. So, having everything together, this is how the data path uh, look like if we read the forwarding is. Okay. So we already saw these parts, but this is that one of the reasons that I wanted to talk about the register by signal that is needed for forwarding because you see, get this figure a lot in a lot of textbooks and internet. So if I if I didn't include that register right, it could have been confused because why are we forwarding? Why we have some of the signal control signals as the input of the forwarding unit? These control signals are actually register right signals. So the input of the forwarding unit is coming from RT and RS fields plus some signals from the control units. Okay? And something you need to pay attention to if you haven't already. This register write is also coming from MWB for the K2 uh, type 2 hazards, but it's coming from execution memory. For type one hazards, and that makes sense too. Right? We just want to see if this instruction there's a dependency here. So you do have to pay attention what kind of signal you want to use at what stage. So this is what hardware looks like. Now I want to. Okay, so this is a small thing, let me talk about it, and then I'll talk about that. So you remember that for ITAC instructions, we had a multiplexer for choosing the second source, right? Previously, we had a second source, and the second source could come from the immediate field. The way that is handled, now we add that multiplexer for you, so you can see that too. This is ILU source, which was choosing from uh, the immediate portion, or what used to come from register file already. Uh, but this, in this case, we add the multiplexer here, and this multiplexer chooses between this block, which is either the forwarded content or what is coming from the register file, or the immediate portion. So we add this multiplexer. And another way of doing this would be adding another input to this multiplexer. But that could have been confusing because then the forward the unit uh, should also choose the source, immediate source. So we don't want to do that. We just want forwarding unit to deal with forwarding. But theoretically, you can add another input because you already have a three by one. You can also support a fourth input. So what the inputs that you have is zero, 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 one, one, zero. You could keep one, one for immediate case. <coughs> okay, but we don't want to do that because we want to have the ALU source and control unit handling this plug and not the forwarding unit. Okay, so this is how the data path looks like with the immediate uh, part. Okay, so all the examples that we had so far is focusing on the hazards that happen in the execution stage. Okay, but what about the hazards that can happen in, in the memory stage? Right. So this is one case that we see here. It's a subtraction followed by store word. So subtraction should happen, and then the result of the subtraction wants to be stored in the memory. So this is where we have an issue. 
we need this data to be ready to store it in the memory for that. So, so how does that work? So theoretically, let me let me just talk about it a little bit. So when we are at the store word stage, before get before showing you the solution, we are at the store word stage. So this is store word is here in the memory stage. Subtraction is in the write back stage, right? So the result of the subtraction is here, but it is not written back to the register file. So store word doesn't have access to it. Okay, let's think about it because this can help your quiz. So if we wanted to fix this problem, we need the content here, but the result of the subtraction is at the right back stage. So how could we solve this problem? What we want to do is, I give you the wrong answer, uh, which is not completely wrong, it's not just optimized. What we could do was, right here, we forwarded it to the memory, right? We had a path that forwarded the content to the memory. And then we add the multiplexer right here. And then we compared the RD and RS or RT in this stage. So RD coming from MWB, we compared that with the RS or RT of the execution memory. If we found a dependency, then we forwarded this content, what from here, to the input of the memory for store work. That would have fixed the problem, right? We just add another multiplexer here, which can choose between the input that's coming from the AOU or it's coming from the forwarded next stage from right back. Multiplexer here, selecting the multiplexer and so on. Does this make sense or not? Because if it doesn't make sense, you're gonna have trouble in the quiz. Does this make sense to you? We are recreating something new. We just wanna forward it. We need to make sure what conditions we have to check. The condition that we have to check here is a destination coming out of the MemWB and compare it with the source and first source and the second source in here. And basically, we just need to care about the second source for store. And if it was equal, then we set another multiplexer here. This multiplexer is choosing from what it, what it wants to be stored in the memory is either coming from the ALU or is coming from here. Okay? So this can fix the problem, but we are fortunate that the hardware that we had before can also fix the problem. So we don't need a new hardware for this. We kind of find this problem one step earlier. Right? So if when the subtraction is here, and the store word is here, by the same forwarding unit, this RD is equal to RT. So this is RT, right? This is RS, this is RT for store word. So we do find this hazard before getting to that point. How? Through this condition, which is RD is equal to RT, which means it's, two, it's 1B. So this is a data type 1B, but instead of having by like finding it in the memory stage, we actually do find it in the execution stage. And we already forward it. How do we forward it? This way. So, so far, we, because in the execution stage, we forgot about this path, that this path also exists. So when we talk about the execution hazard, we forwarded it here, and it was used by ALU, right? But if we find this dependency one step earlier, when we get the result of subtraction, we forward it back here, and this is a store word is here, subtraction is here. The result is here, we have the one, one zero selected through this path, and what is in the execution memory is already the result of the subtraction. So store word can actually use it. So we could have fixed it in two different ways. One, the straightforward way, which was adding Getting the output here, adding a multiplexer, modifying the forwarding unit. But fortunately, the same hardware identified this problem, this problem one step earlier. And when it happens here at the execution stage. So for that reason, we always say 
then we don't have any data hazards at the memory stage. Right? Because of this case. It automatically handles it. Any questions here? Now, So there is a case that, look at this case, we talked about it before. So now we have all the data hazards that we thought that could happen in the execution stage handled through the forwarding unit, but there is still one scenario that we can't handle that problem with forward. We already know about it. We talked about it earlier, and that's the scenario with the load board followed by an R-type instruction. So if we have load board, Data will be ready at the end of the memory stage at this pipeline, and we can't really forward. This was the only case that we said that we do have to stall the pipeline. Right? Forwarding unit by itself can't fix the problem. If you have a load board followed by an arithmetic or logic instruction or R type instruction, that depends on the second dependency cannot be fixed by forwarding because the data would be available to a stage after when we, what we need to do with execution. Okay? So that means that we need a stalling. This is the only case that we need to do the stalling. So to find the stalling, so this is a terminology that is used can, that can be a little bit confusing, which is what the unit that handles this stalling process is called hazard detection units. Okay. We kind of think that the forwarding unit is also doing hazard detection, right? But the idea behind calling that hazard detection unit is because when, when we add the forwarding unit, we don't have any hazards anymore. Although it's called data hazard, but it fixes the hazards. So we don't really, by adding the forwarding unit, we don't have data hazards, except for this case. And that's why this is called the hazard detection unit. So this is the actual real hazard that happens that cannot be fixed by the forwarding unit. So to fix such problem, we have to add the hazard detection unit to find that kind of dependency. The dependency between a load board followed by an R-type instruction. Okay. So but we have to find that dependency early on because we want to stall the pipeline. We don't want to send the instructions in and then figure out that, that, no, we couldn't do it, we have to stall it. Because that, if you do it, there's a process called flushing the pipeline, and that's a more expensive process, okay? I mean, this is also called flushing the pipeline. So it's not very accurate, but we don't want to send it to the pipeline. Okay, so we add the hazard detection unit here, okay? And what you need to do here is, this is an example of add a load board, okay? So we want to compare the destination register in load board with the source register in the end. And this, is, has, this has to happen at this stage. So the condition that we have for this is if the RT, which is this one here, in the IDEX pipeline, is equal to either RS or RT in the IFID pipeline. So if we fetch an instruction like AND, and we check that instruction that we fetched, we check the first or second source of that instruction, and this is equal to the, to the, to the RT of the next instruction, which is what we have here, this means that we have a load word and R type dependency, but that would not be enough because we might have a branch equal, for example, here that satisfies the same condition. If I have BEQ register two register one loop, this also satisfies this instruction. So in this case, we actually have to check the control unit. So this is one of the cases for the register write case. I believe that we didn't need it, but for this, we have to make sure that this one is actually a load board instruction. And the way that we can check if it's a load board is checking the mem read signal. If the mem read signal is one, it means that not only this condition is met, 
but also it's actually a load board. It's not any other branch equal or any other instructions. Okay? So the condition would be RT is an I type instruction in the IDEX pipeline is equal to RS in the IFID pipeline, or, this is an OR, the RT of, of IFID pipeline. And then we have to end this condition with checking the memory signal. Okay? This condition tells me that we have a hazard that we can't fix with forward. Right? So now what should we do? We have to stall the pipeline. How do you think we install the pipeline? We want to add bubbles, right? We want to add no operations. But how do we do no operations? How can we say to the processor that you're not doing any operations? So technically, if we don't write any registers, and if we don't write to any memory, in the processor. It's as if it didn't do anything. Right? So if we set the control signals to not write anything to the register file and not write anything to the memory, it doesn't matter what it is doing, it doesn't have any effect on the system. In addition to that, when we stall a signal, we have to make sure that we keep reading the same instruction until the pipeline is stalled. We don't go to the next instruction. So we hold the signal, program counter, to where it is. And then we set the control signals in a way that the data path is actually not writing anything to the register of memory. So there are two things involved. Okay? So one is keeping the program counter where it is. So at this stage, PC is already added at four. So what we do in the hazard detection is subtracting it before and sending it back. So PC plus four is already added in the you know, fetch stage. If we do PC minus four, we go back to the instruction that it was reading. So the first thing is handled there. The second thing is we, we set all the control signals to zero. So now register write is zero, memory is zero, mem write is zero. So we are not writing any registers, we are not reading the memory, we are not writing anything to the memory. It's as if we are not doing anything, right? So the moment the hazard detection units, get it here, finds the dependency with this instruction, it does two things. It changes the program counter to read the same PC, and it sets all the control signals to zero. Fortunately, the control signals are set at the right place with this multiplexer because if they're zero, then it's going to be sent to the next pipeline, and this is where we actually need to send the control signals. So when we set everything zero, no operation here, no operation here, and the no operation is going to go through the pipeline. Okay? So how does it work? It's like this. <laughs> we read the instruction, we read the register file right here, we find the hazard. The only hazard that can happen, based on what we discussed so far. And then we have bubbles in the next stages. At this stage, we read the instruction again, because we set the program counter to the instruction before. So we read it again, and we let it work. Now, because there is a stall here, the load board can be forwarded. Because of this one stall that we have at this stage. Does it make sense?